Welcome back to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Padilla. Now we're going to talk about plausibility versus probability. Let's start with a scenario. Linda is 25 years old. She's single, outspoken, and very bright. She majored in philosophy. As a student, she was deeply concerned with issues of discrimination and social justice, and also participated in the Black Lives Matter demonstrations. So let's decide which alternative is more probable. Is Linda a bank teller? Or is Linda a bank teller and is activate, active in the Me Too movement? What do you think? What is more probable? Well, what we find is 89% of undergraduates got this answer wrong, meaning they think that Linda is a bank teller and is active in the Me Too movement. Now, why would that be the case? Essentially, they are using their prototype of what people in the Me Too movement are like and using that as uh, that their primary driver of their decision rather than thinking about the base rate. The base rate of people who are bank tellers is much larger than the base rate of people who are bank tellers and active in the Me Too movement. We can see this in a, a Venn diagram here where we have bank tellers, people in the Me Too movement, and the proportion of people that are both of those two things is just simply smaller. So there will always be a higher probability of someone being a bank teller or someone being in the Me Too movement than someone being both of those two things. But it seems very representative that this person is both a bank teller and in the Me Too movement because it fits that description so well, which is why this, this heuristic is very grabbing on our, uh, very has a strong hold on our decisions. There's a conflict between the intuition of representativeness and the logic of probability. Now, one way to kind of develop a strategy to help you understand these scenarios and make more effective decisions is to think of less is more. So in the conjunction fallacy, this is when people judge a conjunction of two events, here a bank teller and being a feminist, to be more probable than one event, a bank teller um, or just a feminist. So when you are faced with joint probabilities of two events occurring, Either event in isolation will be more probable than the two of them occurring together. That's what less is more means here. Let's look at another scenario. Which is more plausible? A massive flood somewhere in North America next year in which 1,000 people drowned. Or an earthquake in California sometime next year causing a flood in which more than 1,000 people drowned. Now you see the kind of game we're playing here. The second example feels more plausible because California has earthquakes. We know that. And it could earthquake could definitely cause a flood killing a thousand people. But that is a joint probability of something happening in California and a flood. The first example is just a single probability that a flood somewhere, anywhere in North America, um, would kill a thousand people. Does that make sense? Now, if we think of what's more probable, that's really how we need to focus on making these judgments and it will help us make more accurate judgments. If we ignore what's plausible and focus on what's probable, we'll make more effective decisions. Okay, and this leads me to a discussion about why it is so hard for us to reason with these probabilities. And it's primarily because we have such a difficulty understanding probability at all. And when I say probability, I mean this kind of like 18% chance, 18% likelihood, 18% risk. This type of framing is a probabilistic framing where you're shown information in this way. One of my favorite studies that illustrates this um, suggests what they found is that of 463 college educated participants, not just average person, college educated participants, 16 to 20 percent could not correctly answer the question, what, which represents the larger risk? One, five, or 10 percent. 
These are college educated people could not say if one, five or 10% represents a higher risk. That might seem crazy to you that they couldn't get it right. But the truth is, is that reasoning with prob with this type of probabilistic framing is difficult for most people. This is a college educated group. If they had done it with um, non college educated people, they probably would have find a higher proportion of people getting these answers wrong, which should be kind of alarming because we're presented with this type of information all of the time. Now there's an alternative to this, which is a frequency framing. Rather than saying 18%, we would say eight out of 10 times. And this was proposed by Gerg Gigerenzer, and he is a very famous individual in decision-making and behavioral economics. And why I'm pointing out this theory is this is really one of the counter theories to Kahneman's um, kind of dual process account where we tend to make irrational decisions and um, we have to activate, you know, type two processing to inhibit our irrational choices. Well, there's a group of people um, led by Gigerenzer that kind of take the opposite framing, which is that it's not as if we're irrational, it's that the information that's provided to us is very confusing. And if it were to be provided in a more intuitive way, then we could understand it. And I will note, this is sort of a false dichotomy. These two <laughs> camps don't necessarily, they're not in such opposition, um, but it should be noted that um, there is kind of a, a difference in uh, framing of the problem. So. Uh, what Gingerenser proposed is that if you frame the question in a way that's more intuitive, people can actually make judgments more effectively and they look more rational. If you want to use that kind of uh, dirty word, <laughs> like what is or is not rational. That's really the question here. Gingerenser proposes that, you know, we are rational, but the information provided to us is quite confusing. So he would propose that rather than saying, 10% chance of rain tomorrow, we would say one out of 10 times it would rain in cases like tomorrow. And what he found is that pretty systematically people are more effective in thinking about that type of framing than a probabilistic framing. And it makes a lot of sense because that's really how we experience probability throughout our lives. We rarely um, convert events in our lives to this kind of numerical form of risk. Instead, we think of things like, I drove down that street 10 times to work and six times there was traffic. So there's probably gonna be traffic. I'm not going to drive down that road. So we would think about it in like six out of 10 times, there's probably traffic on that road, right? So we do experience probability throughout our daily lives, but we rarely convert it to 60%. You know, you're not gonna go home and, and tell your spouse or your roommate, there's a 60% chance that there's traffic on that road. You know, we think about it in terms of these kind of ratios, this uh, number out of a, a base rate. Now, this has been found very systematically to improve judgments. And one of the best ways to communicate this information is actually with visualizations, which is what I study. So a fantastic way to communicate the same information, 18%, is with a visualization like this. And the important part about communicating this frequency information, this 18 out of 100 type framing, is that when you show it in a picture, you allow people to use their visual system, which is the relationship between their eye and their brain, to make the judgment. We have evolved really elaborate systems through all of human history to find patterns in information. We look around in our world and we're trying to notice patterns and pick up on things. So we are very, very good at looking at a visualization like this and being able to see the proportion without having to count, without having to use numbers at all. And these types of visualizations have been found to be very effective for most people and in particular, individuals with low numeracy or the inability to work with numbers. And that tends to correlate with people who have less education. So the people who need the most support in making these effective decisions with risk, these visualizations tend to help them.
Let me give you an example of the power of communicating this visually. So here's a simple question. What is the likelihood that the temperature will be freezing 32 degrees or below? If I were to show you this in text, I might say that the predicted mean temperature is 34.5 degrees, predicted high or predicted low is 31 and high is 38. Now, what do you think the probability is of the temperature being 32 degrees or below? <laughs> it's a hard, it's a hard estimate. Okay. Let's say we use a visualization that uses frequency framing, showing you proportions to communicate the same information. Okay, here we have what's called a quantile dot plot created by one of my um, favorite collaborators. His name is Matthew Kay. He's from Northwestern. And the beauty of this is it shows distributions of information and it uses a frequency framing, meaning you can kind of count up the relative proportion. So in this, when we see this visualization and we want to know what's the probability that the temperature will be 32 degrees or below, we find 32 degrees on this visualization here and note that each of these dots represents a 5% chance and then we can simply count up the probability. So 32 degrees or below would be 5, 10, 15% probability. And that is very intuitive and you didn't even really need to count. You could do um, an estimation based on the proportion of dots just visually. You can kind of guess, you don't have to count, but you could count if you wanted to. Okay, summary here, there is a conjunction fallacy, which is when people judge a conjunction of two events to be more probable than one of the events in a direct comparison. And Gigerenzer, he proposed that our decisions seem flawed when we are provided with confusing information. For example, frequency framing is more intuitive to understand than probability. And one of the best ways to communicate frequency framing is with visualizations. Thank you.